Hello everyone, I'm Diptak Bhattacharya. I'm a graduate student in the Advanced Teeth Processing and Products Research Center in the Colorado School of Mines. The title of my presentation is Liquid Metal Embrittlement Susceptibility of Zinc-Coated Advanced High Strength Steels. I would like to thank my advisor, Professor John Spear, and all my industrial mentors for their continuous enthusiasm and support in this project. Now, this problem of liquid metal embrittlement has surfaced very recently, and it's a huge concern for the automotive industry that relies so much on advanced high strength steels. Now, let me first tell you what is liquid metal embrittlement. Now, if we have a zinc coated steel, the zinc coating is on the surface of the steel. Now, the zinc coating has a much lower melting temperature than that of the steel. Now, if we heat the zinc coated steel to a temperature above the zinc melting temperature, then we will have liquid zinc on top of the solid steel. Now, in that condition, if we simultaneously apply a tensile stress, then what we see is that the liquid zinc from the coating starts to penetrate into the steel along the grain boundaries of the steel. Now, zinc penetration will weaken the boundaries and the action of the tensile stress will cause cracking of the zinc penetrated boundary. And if you look into the picture to the right, now that's a zinc EDS map of a zinc coated steel that was deformed at 700 degrees C. What we see, this is the zinc coating, that is a steel, and the zinc EDS map tells us that the zinc from the coating has penetrated into the steel. So that's the LME crack. Now we suspected that both the microstructure or the chemical composition can independently influence LME susceptibility. And in this presentation, I will show you how we established that the microstructure of an AHSS can independently influence LME susceptibility. Now we used a cold roll steel having a fixed chemical composition and we performed continuous annealing using four different thermal cycles to generate four different starting microstructures. We generated a fully marincitic microstructure. We generated a quenched and partition microstructure having marincite and retained austenite. We generated a trip bainitic ferrite microstructure through austempering having carbide free bainite and we generated a dual phase microstructure having ferrite and marincite. Now, please note that the marincitic QNP and TBF steels were generated through full austenitization of our cold roll panels. In contrast, the dual phase microstructure was generated through intercritical annealing of the cold roll panels followed by quenching to room temperature. Now, we performed hot tension tests using zinc coated specimens of these four microstructures at a temperature of 500 degrees C, which is above the zinc melting temperature, and we had very interesting observations. We observed that the martensitic QNP and TBF steels all formed LME cracks at this temperature, whereas the dual phase steel showed very small LME cracks, thereby exhibiting a suppressed LME behavior. Now, these results suggest that there may be some boundary which is cracking in the martensitic QNP or TBF steel. Maybe that boundary is not present in a predominant form in the dual phase microstructure. So we have to investigate the crack path in these high LME sensitive steels. Now we investigated the tip of the LME crack that was formed in the fully marincitic microstructure. So here is the EBSD inverse pole figure and the crack is pointed by these yellow arrows. Now the EBSD IPF tells us that there are tons of boundaries in the marincitic microstructure. So which of these boundaries cracked? So we use the EBSD IPF of the marincitic microstructure to reconstruct the prior austenitic microstructure. So the austenite that was present before the marincitic microstructure was produced and we observed that these cracked boundaries coincided exactly with the prior austenite boundary. So the prior austenite boundaries are the preferred path for LME cracking in the marincitic microstructure. Now in the quenched and partition microstructure, which has two phases, the green is marincite, the red is austenite, we carefully looked into the retained austenite orientations on the two sides of the LME crack. And what we observed is that the retained austenite orientations on the two sides of the LME crack are different, which means again in the quenched and partition microstructure, the prior austenite grain boundaries were responsible for LME cracking. So we now understand why the dual phase microstructure was more resistant to LME cracking. The high LME sensitive marincitic or the QNV microstructure were generated through full austenitization. Therefore, in these microstructures, we had a continuous network of prior austenite boundaries, these red boundaries that allowed an easy pathway for LME crack propagation. On the other hand, the dual phase microstructure was generated through intercritical annealing or partial austenitization. In this microstructure, the prior austenite grain boundary area fraction was lower. And more importantly, the prior austenite grain boundaries of these red boundaries are disconnected from one another. Therefore, even if an LME crack forms, the crack will not be able to propagate. 
So in conclusion, the starting microstructure definitely affects LME susceptibility and a continuous network of prior arsenide boundaries is essential to support the propagation of LME cracks. And if you're interested to know more, please read our recently published research in MSEA, or you can always contact me at this email address. Thank you, everyone.